AFL, PFL, pre-fader, post-fader. Have you ever seen these buttons in your DAW or mixing console? In this video, I'll show you what these buttons do and give you an example of when you might use each of them. First, let's look at what is meant by pre and post fader. Right here, I've got a simple session with a snare drum track and a reverb channel. There's a send on the snare drum track that allows us to determine how much of the snare signal will be sent to the reverb. This is called an effect send or an aux send, and the send level can be controlled here. Have a listen to the way we can determine the level of snare reverb by controlling the level of the reverb send. Over on the right side of the effects send window, we see an option to choose between post fader, pre fader, post effects, and pre fader, pre effects. Right now it's set to post fader, which means the send occurs after the signal passes through the channel fader at the bottom. So if we start turning down the channel fader, it not only reduces the level of the dry snare sound, because that's what the channel fader does, but it also reduces the send level from the snare track to the reverb channel. This is probably what we want in this scenario because now if we turn the snare up or down, the relative level of snare reverb will also be adjusted. If we set the effect send to pre-fader instead, adjusting the snare channel fader will have no impact on the amount of snare that's sent to the reverb. This could be helpful if you only want reverberant snare with very little or no dry signal, but in most situations, this would make for a very frustrating workflow. Every time we adjust the dry level of the snare in the mix, we would need to go and adjust the send level to the reverb as well. If we had any effects active on the snare track, we could use the two pre-fader options to determine if the signal sent to the snare reverb will include or exclude those effects. Pre-fader post effects will include the effects in the signal that's sent to the snare reverb, while pre-fader pre-effects will not. Another situation where pre-fader might be useful is when using parallel processing. For example, we may have a clean snare track and a saturated snare track that we wish to blend together. Perhaps we'll use some basic EQ and compression on the clean snare track and choose a pre-fader post effects send to the saturated snare track so that that signal also includes those basic effects. Now we can effectively have two copies of the same signal, but one copy runs through the SoundToys Decapitator plugin and one doesn't. Having a pre-fader send also means we can blend those two copies together to find the right balance without needing to readjust the send level. Similar to the effect send example, sometimes we use aux sends in live sound to send signals back to the musicians on stage so they can hear themselves. If you have a dedicated console for mixing monitors, it's up to you how you set up the sends that feed the monitors, either pre or post fader. But if you're mixing monitors from the front of house console, you'll probably want to use pre fade sends. This will allow you to set the monitor levels with the aux sends and control the front of house mix with the faders. If you use post fader sends, you might inadvertently cause feedback on stage when you boost a vocal fader or a guitar fader during a solo. Keeping it separated with a pre fader send is the way I like to work. Just remember, the preamp is shared by both. So boosting the preamp level will boost both signals. Another common place to encounter the idea of pre and post fader is when monitoring on a mixing console. For example, while doing a sound check for a live show, you may want to hear a channel in your headphones 
without letting everyone in the audience hear it. With a post-fader or after-fader listen setup, sometimes called AFL, you would have to push the fader up to hear the channel, which would subject the entire audience to hearing it. This is often not what you want. Instead, you can use a PFL, pre-fader listen, and this will keep the sound hidden from the audience by keeping the faders pulled down or muted while still verifying in your headphones that everything on that channel sounds good. Then, after verifying in headphones, you can disengage the PFL button, drag up the fader, bringing the channel into the mix for the audience. When mixing a live show, this setting could save your job in some cases. On some consoles, you can choose the solo behavior in the settings. In this case, we see PFL or solo in place. PFL is certainly what we want in a live situation because solo in place means every other channel will be muted in the main speakers if we solo something. Can you imagine how it must feel to do this in the middle of a show? I can. In the next video that's on your screen now, you'll learn about gain staging, another very important topic in audio. I'll see you there.